Hello lovely people of the internet. Most of you probably know me as Axis or Axis Official from over on my Twitch channel, which I sadly am not really active on anymore. But I've been working on a personal project that I wanted to share with you all today because it's basically finished. I only have one last thing to do and that is to spray it with like a matte sealant. As some of you who follow me on Twitter and Instagram have been watching, I have been working on this Elden Ring jar hat for, I say like at least a couple of months, but it's finally, finally done. I only have that last step I was talking to you about a second ago, but it's done! I basically recorded videos of me crafting this thing from beginning to end and thought it would be a really cool experiment to see, you know, how I would handle doing a project like this. I thought it would be a really fun thing for you all to be able to experience with me as I made this thing from start to finish. So here's what it looks like when it's on. There we go. So I can't really see out of this thing when it's on my head, but when I turn my head, it moves with it, which is pretty sick. There are holes right here that I drilled into the helmet so that I can kind of see out, but it's not at eye level. It's down here, so I can kind of see, like, I can see the ground, so I don't bump into anything as I'm, like, wearing this and walking around. But yeah, this has been a really, really fun personal project to work on, and I could not be happier with how this thing turned out. I really hope that you all enjoy watching the process. I hope that you find it interesting or educational or, you know, whatever you want to get out of it, that you get out of it. So or maybe it'll inspire you to do a project of your own. Who knows? But yeah, uh, here we go. We're going to hop right in. I'm going to show you all the steps from beginning to end, how I did this thing. And yeah, hope you all enjoy. I'll see you soon. So the very first part of this process was actually me needing to take a 3D scan of my head in order to be able to figure out what the patterning would look like for the jar hat. I used an app called EM3D to take a quick scan of my head. From EM3D you can actually export the scan, which is what this is, you can export the scan in a bunch of different file types and I think I went with OBJ for this. But yeah, so brought it into Blender and then started modeling out the jar to get the pattern going. So this next bit is actually me modeling out the jar in Blender. I decided to model out the jar in Blender first so that I could get the sizing right and so that I could eventually export this into Pepakura, which is a program that you can use to take a 3D model and map it out onto paper so you can build it with paper before you build it with foam. So once I was happy with the model, I went ahead and exported it into Pepakura, as you can see here. And on the right hand side are all the different pieces that are needed to create the 3D shape that I modeled. So the tricky part about this was getting all the pieces to fit in a way that used as little paper as possible, but I got there eventually. As you can see, there were quite a few pages with all the different pattern pieces on them. I didn't record the whole thing just because it was a very time consuming process and I don't want to waste your guys' time. So here's a little snippet of what that process looks like. For some of this process I used tape, for some of it I used hot glue, and I honestly think if I were to go back and do this again I would use tape and I would be more strategic about where I placed the pieces and I would also be more strict about the paper pattern so that the end pattern is exactly what I'm looking for so I don't have to make any more tweaks further down the line. And after it was all taped together, this is what it looked like. As you can see, there are a couple of holes here and there just because I didn't tape absolutely every edge together, but it was exactly what I needed for patterning. So I went ahead and made a pattern for the bulk of the helmet, which were eight of these little panels that you can see me drawing onto the foam here. As is pretty typical with cosplay projects like this, I used a handy dandy super sharp box cutter in order to get a nice clean edge on these different pieces that I cut out of the foam. I think I used an 8mm or 10mm foam for the bulk of the helmet and then a 2mm thick foam for all of the details. There was one more main step that I needed to tackle before I could actually start gluing this thing together and that is to dremel all the edges so that the contact cement that I was using for this would actually adhere to the foam. Otherwise it has kind of a hard time grabbing onto it so you gotta rough up the edge a little bit for the glue to be able to like really set in there. I think the next part of this was actually the scariest part which was gluing all of the different seams of each piece together. 
and I think that moving slowly with this absolutely pays off because you don't want to rush gluing everything together and then realize that something is completely off. So I really took my time with gluing all the different pieces together. If any of you happen to be curious, I used barge contact cement in order to glue this whole thing together and it was actually kind of hard to get the last pieces in there because the shape was so cylindrical, it was almost too cylindrical. <laughs> I needed the radius of the helmet to be a little bit bigger and it just wanted to collapse in on itself so I really had to be careful with gluing the last couple of pieces in here. And just like that, I had completed one of the first like milestones of creating this thing. Because I had the, the main body of it all built and put together, and now I could start actually adding in some cool details and all of that fun stuff. So next up on the list was to start adding some details to this thing, even though I probably should have sanded down the jar before adding details, but I will touch on that more later. So first of all, I wanted to add a band around the top part of the jar to make it look like there was sort of a lip up there, because there's um, sort of like a little edge detail up at the top of the jar. Of course, for all of the detail work, I had to do the same process where I dremeled the side that I planned to attach to the jar, and then used contact cement to put both of the pieces together. So I did the same process for a couple of bands around the middle of the jar, and then one towards the opening of the jar. And something else that I added but forgot to record was the thick sort of square shaped lip around the opening of the jar to give it sort of that ceramic pot sort of look. For these smaller thinner details I ended up using super glue instead of barge to put them on the jar simply because I didn't want to have any glue goobers I guess <laughs> on the outside of the jar that I would have to remove later so use super glue instead. Next I decided to go ahead and make and attach the handles to the jar. What I ended up doing was taking two half pipe foam dowels, gluing them together, and then looping them around in a circle so that I could make a handle out of it. I wish I could say that I just had the foam dowels on hand, but I had to glue the two together because I only had the halves instead. So I tried to get the general size and shape as close as I could to the reference images that I'd taken for this. And once I felt like it was in a good spot, I went ahead and cut the amount that I think I needed for the handle, glued the two ends of the dowel together, sanded down the edge that I was planning on attaching to the jar, and went ahead and glued it on there. Since I'd added the majority of the trim that I was planning on putting on this thing, I thought it would be a good time for me to tackle the sort of lumpy looking mud stuff around the top and sides of the jar where the handles meet. So I got myself some foam clay, which is a material that I had never used before, and it's actually super, super cool. It acts like clay until it dries, and then it acts more like foam, so you can sand it down, all that sort of stuff. So here I'm just placing it on top of the jar and trying to make it look all lumpy and muddy and gross. And I think it turned out looking pretty good. Here's a couple of snippets from when I did the handle sides as well. Something that I should have done but didn't was wet down the surface of the foam with water before putting the clay on. It would have stuck a lot better if I'd done that, but regardless it actually stuck pretty well, so just something for me to keep in mind for future projects. The next part of this, which ended up being really tedious but also made this thing look so cool, was adding the Celtic braid detail around that inner band. I think it turned out looking so, so good. I was really, really happy with the result. 
once I finished up the Celtic braid details, I really wanted to tackle the filigree pattern that's just beneath that. And so how I ended up doing that was taking a pen and roughly drawing out the shape onto the foam directly, and then taking a Dremel and carving out those shapes using sort of a cylindrical shaped Dremel head. And I think it turned out absolutely beautiful. I'm really, really pleased with the design. I don't think it's exactly the same as it is in the game, but I'm okay with that. Unfortunately, I didn't record the next couple of steps. I did this for a few things, so sorry about that. But the next couple of things that I tackled were filling in the seams with some kind of filler. I used quick seal, whatever that stuff is made out of. <laughs> So use quick seal to fill all of the seams to hopefully make the seams less visible. And then I took a Dremel and gouged out some big parts of the jar to make it look like it had cracked in some places and that some of the filigree had broken off. After getting all the cracks and breaks sort of established in the jar, I really wanted to add some more sort of like gross textural detail to the mud. So I ended up getting some acrylic paste or impasto and ended up applying it with a little sponge just to get a little bit more detail. This stuff is great because it starts out kind of like a gel and as it dries it hardens. So you can sand it, you can just paint it, you can do all sorts of fun stuff with it. So it made the surface of this thing look so so gross which is exactly what I wanted. I really wanted it to look grimy and muddy and just to have a little bit more interesting texture in there so it wasn't just the smooth mud look. So unfortunately the next step I forgot to record, but I covered the entire jar with a couple of layers of Flex Bond, which is a primer that is commonly used with EVA foam cosplay stuff. The uh, primer is flexible, so if the jar were to bend at all, I wouldn't have to worry about the paint snapping or breaking or anything like that. And once I'd done that, I decided to put on a couple of layers of paint with an airbrush just to see what the jar would look like with the lighter value since I'd been working specifically with the darker foam. One thing that I noticed after having airbrushed this is that the seams were actually still pretty visible, which is unfortunate. This harkens back to the sanding I was talking about earlier. It would have been much smarter for me to sand down the entire surface of the jar before adding any of the detail because I wouldn't have had to do the next step, which was to sand down the seams through the primer and through the paint that I had put on here. This was honestly a super, super scary part of the process because I felt like I was absolutely destroying all of the work that I'd previously done, but ultimately it ended up looking so much better after I had sanded down the seams. Even though I had to reprime and repaint the areas that I'd sanded down, I, I'm really happy that I ended up going through with this step, as scary as it was. If anything, sanding down the jar and repriming it in the areas where I'd sanded it, it almost added to the surface level grime sort of feel. If anything, I think it benefited in that it hides the seams better and it also helped make the jar just feel extra grimy. Now that I'd gotten all the base level painting done for the jar, I could start painting all of the fun details, starting off with the handles. I used a really cool champagne gold color. It was a little bit on the sheer side, so I ended up having to do several layers of it, but I really, really think the color turned out great. It was actually just after this point that a very dear friend and coworker of mine made the excellent point that I wouldn't be able to see out of the helmet. 
and I'd thought about this previously. I'd thought about maybe drilling some holes where the cracks in the jar were, or maybe cutting out a slit in the area just above the Celtic braid so that I could see out. And ultimately what I ended up deciding to do was drilling holes into the Celtic braid so that it would kind of be fitting for the style of the helmet and wouldn't be as noticeable as cutting just like a slit out of the jar. And I think that it's a pretty good solution to the problem of not being able to see out of this thing. So thank you so much, my dear friend Ashley, for helping me realize I couldn't see out of this thing. And it would probably be nice <laughs> for me to be able to see. So I did take some liberties here. Obviously the game version of the jar doesn't have any eye slits or eye holes, but I don't want to run into stuff while I'm wearing this. So figured it would be a good compromise. Since I had painted a base color for the jar and the handles, I also wanted to get a base color down for all of the muddy, clumpy parts of the jar. So I mixed up some brown and black paints and started getting a base color down for those before adding on all of the other mud and grime. Then of course came my most, most favorite part of this process, which is putting on all of the mud and gunk and grime onto this thing. There were so many layers of gunk and grime that I ended up painting onto this. And I just did it little by little because I didn't want to go too ham right out of the gate, but I also wanted to make sure that I put enough on there. And thankfully I had enough of both the darker paints and the lighter paints that if I went too overboard in any direction, I would be able to reel it back a bit. But I think that it ended up blending together really well the super dark colors of the mud and the super light color that I started off with for the ceramic parts of the pot. A tool that ended up being super instrumental for this sort of grungifying part of the painting process were these little sponge paint brushes. You can see there's like a little bag of them on the bottom left there. I ended up using just one of those brushes for all of the textural detail that I needed. I also used that same sponge for the acrylic gel part of this process, but it added so much texture to these sort of like big globs of paint that I was putting onto the jar. I could do these big broad strokes and then use the sponge to sort of diffuse the paint that I had put on there in a way that added texture and thus added sort of more visual interest to the surface. So kudos to these brushes. These brushes are awesome. I absolutely recommend if you're doing a project like this and you need to make something look super gross, get you some sponge brushes because they will be your best friend. <laughs> I also did multiple dark washes, especially around the filigree and the Celtic braid parts of the jar, just to really get the detail of those to stick out a little bit better. I think it turned out looking super, super good. In addition to all the mud and grime that I ended up painting on this thing, I decided to sort of fill in the cracks that I had dremeled into the surface with some darker paint, just so that it would sort of emphasize the existence of those. It was kind of hard to see it just from a surface level, so I thought that painting those on would help add a little bit more depth to the cracks that I had dremeled in. And one other thing that I decided to do was both a dry brushing process on top of all of the paint that I'd already put on this. I wanted to sort of highlight some of the gross sort of spiky edges in the mud and also kind of make it look like there's pebbles scattered throughout. It's just a little bit of paint, but it adds a lot of dimension, just makes it feel more detailed and more real. And this is the final result! I was so, so pleased with all of the painting. I also grunged up the handles a little bit so that it didn't look so shiny and metallic. It looked like maybe somebody with muddy hands had grabbed it a few times. But yeah, I was so happy with how this turned out. <laughs> 
there was only one last thing left to do and that was to add in a little bit of padding at the top of the jar inside so that when I put it on it wouldn't fall back or forward so that it would sort of follow my head movements as I look around. So I ended up going and purchasing some upholstery foam and roughly got the shape and the size of the top of the jar and then added just a few simple supports that would be able to sort of wrap onto my head as I put the jar on. I used hot glue to glue all the different pieces together and also to attach the main disc of foam directly to the top of the helmet. And it works great! And that, my friends, is the journey of the jar hat. Thank you so much for watching to the very end of the video. I applaud you. There was a lot of information that I threw out at you guys with this project, but I had an absolute blast with it. I think it turned out looking so awesome. And if I happen to go to any conventions at any point in time in the future, I'll probably be wearing this. Or the other cosplay thing I'm working on, which you guys may or may not know about, but Anyway, you guys are all lovely. Thank you so much for watching. Please hit that subscribe button and just know that you're all lovely and I appreciate you and your support so, so much. And I will see you all in Elden Ring. Oh gosh, putting this thing on is an absolute nightmare. <laughs> Take care, y'all. See you later. Ugh. Oh gosh.